I can hear it here. That's your camera, that's, that's mine. Okay. But you should look at me and just talk. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. Well, hi there. I'm Diana Montford, the world's first, yes, first, transgender television journalist, born male, became female, and we know the drill, right? Uh, my guests are, are, well, our wonderful friend Tanya Walker, whom you've seen on this show many times, and a wonderful new friend, Esther Preeg, mm -hmm. and they're going to tell us all about this wonderful healthcare facility in Jamaica which uh, includes transgender women. Uh, by the way, as you know, Tanya is a trans woman. So, and uh, we're going to talk all about, you know, this wonderful place where trans women can go to access health care, where cisgender, i.e. genetic women, can go to access health care, reproductive care, any kind of gynecological help they might need, uh, and if you are living out of state and watching this, abortion is still legal in New York last time I checked. Mm -hmm. There's a wonderful program called Haven. They will help you come to New York to get a legal abortion and then go back from whence you came. So, you know, we really have to talk about this. My guest is, well, you know who they are, so let's see them. Let's talk to them. Okay, now, um, Esther, mm -hmm. um, what is, what, what's the name of this wonderful group, mm -hmm. and what do you do there, and what's the whole deal? Choices Women's Medical Center is located in Jamaica, Queens. Mm -hmm. um, it was founded 45 years ago, actually, wow. you know, maybe more than 45, by Merle Hoffman. Mm -hmm. She's the president and owner of the company, a woman who owns her own company, um, and it came out of the essence of a need. There was a need for women's reproductive health care and to have a choice in regards to abortion Absolutely, care at yes. that time. Um, and, and in and this time. And it was prior to even a year before Roe versus Wade in So New it's York. from 71, and 72. 70, correct, in 71. And at that time, she saw the need. Women were in need to have a place to make a choice Absolutely. if they wish to continue their pregnancies or not. And she wanted to give them a safe place. In 1970, I was in high school in New Jersey. Emerson High, Union City, New Jersey. Hi, everyone. And a friend of mine got pregnant, and abortion was legal in Manhattan, but not in New Jersey. Right. She had to cross the river to get an abortion. Actually, the first patient that came to Choices came from New Jersey. Merle Hoff actually held her hand in the room. That's, That's how counseling started at that time, mm -hmm. and um, happened to be the director of counseling at Choices Women's Medical Center. The last five years, we created a program where women have an opportunity to talk to someone about their choices, mm -hmm. making sure they're not being forced to make this yes. decision, to know all their options, including abortion, including um, adoption, including about their choice even to continue their pregnancy. Right. And that does happen at Choices, because we offer several different type of services. It's not just abortion care, we offer GYN care, prenatal care. Mm -hmm. We offer GYN care for women who are much older also, we call it their mid-age yes, <laughs> services, because yes, yes, that yes. also is needed. Sex never gets old. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> exactly. And we also offer nutrition services, prenatal services, and soon to be, we're gonna be offering trans care services. And isn't that wonderful that uh, this wonderful group is including transgender women in a, a woman's space? Because as we all know, so many places reject trans women and say that we trans women are not women. And I won't mention that nasty music festival in Michigan, but anyway, <laughs> so many places do reject trans women. And this wonderful place, Choices, in Jamaica, Queens, mm -hmm. here in New York, they do accept trans women. Yes. Um, now, uh, if a trans woman goes to Choices, uh, she will, of course, be treated with the same respect that any woman would be treated. Correct. 
at Choices, um, they will come in right to the main entrance. There's no separate entrances. There's going to be no conference room. No, they're coming into a waiting area where they're going to be received. Mm -hmm. They'll be assigned a number like every other patient is assigned to keep the anonymity. And they'll be meeting with our finance department to discuss I issues with insurance. All right, now many trans women have no money because Correct. many trans women are kept from gainful employment by the system. Um, do you accept Medicaid? Right, so we accept Medicaid. We also can accept, and they could apply for at that time, presumptive Medicaid, so they can actually get that on site with us. Wonderful, so if you have no medical insurance and right. you go there, you will get instant Medicaid. Right. Is and that not? They could get family planning for GY and care. Yes, they can. Yes. Yes, yes. And that's a, they could do it on site. You could walk off the street and come in to do that. Yeah, so that's one of the services that we'll be offering. For the trans community who's having issues with their identity paperwork in regards to how to get a license or how to do that, then that's when they'll be meeting with us in our counseling department to go over how to do that, how to approach it. I know there's some issues with, with trans community getting to a Wi-Fi or getting some means, how they're going to do that, either if they do it online or right. can they go in person. We're located around a hub of different um, courthouse buildings, mm -hmm. um, social services that are in the area. So this will be a, a location where they could come, they could feel safe, and if that's what they need that day, some um, guidance on how to get there, that's what we're going to do. I know the area because many years ago I used to interpret, I'm half Spanish, mm -hmm. and a lot of trans ladies did not speak English, they spoke Spanish. And I was a member of a transgender group, uh, and w I was the interpreter. I would go to court. I'm not mm. a lawyer, but I would go to court to translate between the trans woman who didn't speak English and the instantly <laughs> appointed uh, lawyer who had no clue what he was doing. You're like, who are you? Well, right. I have to quickly explain this whole deal and then, you know, deal with the judge and all that. Ah. So, I mean, it's a nice area. It's full of courts and all that. Right, and Jamaica is going through a transformation. It has in the actual last couple of years. That was one of the key points why Mohawken decided to come back into Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And when she came into Jamaica um, at that time, there really wasn't many offerings or different agencies that offer the services that we no. offer. So we're located easily a block away from the Archer train station, the Long Island Railroad, all the bus companies come through there. So it's a really it's a key we'll central location Jamaica, right there. The la to Suffolk Boulevard and you're there. Sure. So that actually makes a key, um, for many of our patients who don't drive, we don't have a means to get there. Yeah. Um, another way also, because we're next to the, the actual air train that leads you to the JFK airport. And if you're in any way handicapped, you can call Accessorize That's the day before right. and go that That's way. Right. Yeah, so there, there is a means to get there, it's easy to, to get to mm -hmm. choices. And when they come in, after they've seen us also in counseling, we also have a mental health department of counselors, mm -hmm. of licensed clinical social workers, and a psychologist who will be working with this community to assess them. And if they need Do letters. the trans community? Yes, yes, for the trans community, they're going to be receiving an assessment. And from that assessment, if they need a letter for treatment, then we will mm -hmm. be able to provide that. Um, and that is mandatory? It is, is for the program, yes, for them to be able to continue to receive hormone therapy mm -hmm. and to be able to receive any means of that treatment. Yes, they do need to have that. Um, we are following the, the guidelines of WPATH at this time, and this is a place where you could do it all, in other words. Yeah. You, you have a place where you could get counseling, help you with your finances, and eventually you will see the doctor. <laughs> yes, but all in one. So also will they get hormones that same day, the first day they walk They in? will need to have some lab work them beforehand so we can't rush into we need to do a full assessment beforehand mm -hmm. and then when they come back the doctors will decide at that point Even, uh, what if they're already on hormones and so one of the things we're going to be asking for them to bring us some of their records with them sure. or we'll sign consent for releases have it sent to us mm -hmm. whichever makes it easier and then that the doctors will evaluate and review it at that mm -hmm. time and still assess because we want to be able to see is there a need for them we want to eventually start to develop some groups also there at Choices. Yes. Wonderful 12, yes. uh, you know, discussion groups. Definitely. <coughs> for support, support for those who are in the transgender community, for the mm -hmm. family members and loved ones of trans, the transgender, the allies and friends as well. Very much like the Transgender Project at the Center in Manhattan. Correct, correct. Yes, yes. And um, those are our friends as well, so, yes. and there is a need as well for that. C yes, um, there is. What are the main... Often, just connecting mm -hmm. with peers, and knowing that all trans women have many of the same problems helps immeasurably, you know. Well, definitely. And we also want to create a community 
We want to be able to make them feel safe in our space. Yes. And what better way to do that than to actually have them all come? Exactly. Do you handle <coughs> trans men? At this <coughs> moment, if they're Excuse in me. their final transition or they transition to trans men, they will be able to do some pieces of that, but not fully. So we need to have a urologist on board. At this time, we don't have a urologist. Will they be able to get hormones? I believe yes. That's what we're looking at. So they're going to look at the whole full face. Some people, some of the transgender that we've having come to now have explained to us, some of them are not fully transitioned. Some are. We need to see where they are in their process. Well, what, what is fully transitioned to, to well, you? Well, completely fully transitioned person is how they feel. If completely, if the, all their anatomy has going to be completely changed to how they want it to be. Right. Right. Then at that point, and what they identify with. If they are completely a man at that point, we probably won't be able to. Um, oh, I yeah. see what you're saying. In other yes. words, trans men who have become complete men and right. are no longer women Correct. Um, and Correct. cannot be <laughs> helped at a women's facility because right. they're not women. Right. But often not. They may be in the middle process. They may have made it through or not. So it all depends. You know, and can you uh, steer them to uh, men's Correct. So one facility. of the things that we started working on especially when we started this project a couple of months ago, is trying to find the right places and people to send yes. and to refer to yes, for surgery. Because yes. we heard from the transgender community that that is also very important, that not everywhere they feel welcomed. And sometimes accessing certain doctors for certain services is not so easy to do. No. So that's also where our role is to be like a gatekeeper, to be able to um, discuss and to find who is the right person, who's the right fit, who takes their insurance, who doesn't take their insurance. You know, trying to find the actual person that will help them in that. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. and uh, it's not easy. No. It's really not. It's not. Um, when I started this venture a couple of year, months ago, I even went into a local hospital near us, and they themselves told us straightforward they weren't ready to treat transgender. And, and what did you told me outside yeah. what you said to them? And I said, well, you need to get ready. It's mm -hmm. time. I will have people here in, in, at our clinic shortly, and I need to be able to send to a place where they feel safe, where they know that there are professionals that know that really wish and want to work with them. Mm -hmm. as well. And I said, okay, yes, we already need to get ready. But obviously, I know I won't be sending a person there yet because they're not ready yet. So Well, they can stall you forever. Correct. Though, you know, yeah. So um, health and hospitals. Folks at that hospital, what's the name of the hospital? Uh, I can't say that. <laughs> well, you should because we are watching. Yes. We are watching. But health and hospitals created a listing of the hospitals that are. And we do have a hospital nearby. Queens Hospital is actually very nearby. And that's a place that we can actually refer them to. Sure. But at the same time, we want to be able to find places that are not so far away. Exactly. One of the ventures that we found early on was that I would call different places. Oh, you can send them somewhere in Manhattan. I said, but what if the person lives in Far Rockaway, Queens? Exactly. That is a hike for them to get there. So yeah. we need to find a place close by, nearby. And yes. even if you get uh, a metro card from your facility, yes. if you don't have the money, the 275 to get to your facility, right. You know, I mean, people right. forget how m how poor people can be and how much three bucks can mean to you if you don't have Most any money. Definitely. Most yeah. definitely. So just saying you could have the services in Manhattan is not enough. So, right. so we're starting that network now. This is it. This is time. Right. And a, and a person who's in Queens shouldn't just rely even somewhere in Jackson Heights when they live in South Queens. So we need to find ways exactly, exactly. <laughs> to bridge that. Because it's almost the same length of time as getting to Manhattan. Correct, yeah. correct, correct. So we need to be able to provide them more services in the area. And it's time that the transgender community feels comfortable in our neighborhood, yeah. where we are, and for the community to be accepting. And you're a beautiful tra uh, cisgender woman, oh, genetic you. female with a baby and a husband. Yes. And I think you're a wonderful soul to help us all the way you're helping us. Thank you so much. You're more than welcome. And this is just the beginning. No, oh, thank you. Definitely. So, Tanya, what's your group? You're starting a group at Choice. Well, I uh, we're launching uh, Choices Medical Trans Care. It's launching in September, and it'll provide services to the trans and gender nonconforming community. Mm -hmm. uh, and they'll offer, you know, they'll follow the WPATH standards of care, which will allow them to access hormones and other. Uh, needs that they may have. Um, they'll do EKGs, uh, you know, basic, you know, health care. And we all know of a certain institution, which will remain nameless, here in Manhattan, which purports to be uh, by LGBT folk, for LGBT folk, but has some problems providing hormones and other 
uh, yeah. services. Well, this you know this isn't an LGBT organization. No, it's um, this is something new. It's a part of Choices Women's Medical, uh, which takes care of women's health care. You know, all the way up to abortion, gyneco gynecology services, and um, it also has an out of town program mm -hmm. that helps people coming in from out of town access abortion. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that Choices Women's Medical is an excellent place to start for uh, trans people, both trans men and trans women. But obviously, if you're very much a trans man, <laughs> you might be more comfortable in a mm -hmm. men's facility, mm -hmm. and Choices will point you in that direction. Correct. They will uh, help you to access men's health care. Mm -hmm. Correct. And it's very good that she put, uh, mentioned an out-of-town program. Um, in the history of choices, we've actually really treated women have come all the way from the tip of Canada to oh, Bermuda, sure. so out west, bad. Florida. They've made their way to choices because one, they're trying to find a place where they can get the service for reproductive health, especially in regards to abortion care. So what difference would it make if here we have someone who's transgender? Why not? If they need help, this is what we're here for. Did you think of this yourself? I would say not. I think it came from actually Merle Hoffman, who decided, you know, we sat together as a need. I was at an abortion yes, care. Yes, so we have to show yes. Merle Hoffman's yes, book. Yes, we need to. Merle Hoffman's book. Yes. She has a book. What's it called? Intimate, Intimate Wars. Wars. Yeah. Intimate Wars. By yeah. Merle Hoffman. Yes. How yes. can they get that? Um, you can actually get it on Amazon. It's, it's actually printed by the Feminist Press. Um, you can Maybe Google. by the Feminist yeah, Press. The Feminist Press. Well, we had the uh, <laughs> marketing director on ah, recently. Excellent. Yes. Excellent, yes. And you could actually find it. You could even, uh, even get some information. Merle Hoffman is actually on our website. You get some information on that as well, how to mm -hmm. get the book. And we're going to ask you to give your uh, website information and yes. contact information. And yes. wherever you are in the U.S., you. Um, you can access at least information. And maybe, now, is there a program? All right, let's say I live in Texas, mm -hmm. which is notorious for gynophobia, homophobia, transphobia, phobia, phobia. Let's say I'm pregnant or I'm a trans woman. Or I'm really not to know a pregnant trans there woman. You go. No. <laughs> but I'm pregnant or I'm a trans woman. Right. I have no money. I live in this dust bowl. I don't know what I'm going to do. I right. somehow managed to contact you. I have no money. How do I get to, to New right. York? So one of the things that we will do <coughs> is, um, Excuse me. Um, there is actually NAF, the National Abortion Foundation, exists. Uh -huh. It's an organization that do help women all across the United States to get fa assistance in where to go and also for financial funding. So th we will start off there. If they reach out to us, we will then get in contact uh, with other funding resources as well, along with an agency by the name of Haven if they need housing while they're here. There's a volunteer organization that will host them at our site. They will um, they would actually uh, pick them up. They hatch at the bus depot or come and pick them will up from choices. Will they send them a bus ticket? They may not send them a bus ticket, but that will be our role is to try to help and figure out means and ways with that patient. But okay. um, many women will find a way. They'll find their way. They will find a way and to us. And then at that point, it's our responsibility to make sure we contact Haven. Listen, we have someone here who needs your assistance. They may need overnight stay. Volunteers throughout New York City actually house. Um, these so if you have a space, even if it's a studio apartment, it's just Correct. one night. Just one night. And someone can sleep on your floor. Exactly. So don't be shy, and it doesn't have to be the Ritz. Look, everyone knows that the houses are messy and small yes. and all that stuff, <laughs> and there's a roach in the kitchen and a mouse in the bedroom, <laughs> and nobody cares. So, I right. mean, we're all human, and we all know this. Yes. So um, if you have any kind of space that you can share, even for one night now and then for people from Haven, people from other states who need a place to stay for one night so they can access right. medical care, please contact Choice. Yes, you could contact me at Choices Women's Medical Center. Um, you, they will reach out to me, and at that point I will guide them to Haven. And it's a network that w that's created between different clinics, and we will reach out to them. Let them know there's a need. They'll reach out to us, tell us who the volunteer is, and so vice versa. Right. And if you want to be a volunteer there, we'll connect you with it. Please, well. if you possibly can, you know. That's a big need. And well, hopefully, of course, you vet the volunteers. If some big guy says, ah, yeah, I want a chick Most in my definitely. house. Today. <laughs> <laughs> You're not I'm gonna sure do Haven, that. Haven takes care of all <laughs> yes. that. And um, all the volunteers have come and mm. escorted patients. I did that. I was an actress for many years. <laughs> Yes. Somewhere my acting teacher is smiling. You did that beautifully. There you <laughs> go. Yes, yeah, so they will obviously um, screen them. They also yes. will like, make sure that they are for reproductive health. 
Yes. And the choice. Oh, yes, that would be terrible if some evil group Most pretended definitely. to be and then did something to a woman who Most came for definitely. Yes. So we want to make sure of that. And, well, obviously, th they're there to s satisfy a need that's there. So a woman will come to this place and say, they don't know anyone. And they come into a city that's, that's as a stranger to them. So yeah. they need to be able to connect the face, you know, with someone who's willing to help them and escort them throughout this busy city that we live in. Yes. Right? Which and is if, not if easy. you're from a rural area, Ooh. this place is mind-boggling. Most yeah. definitely. It's very overwhelming. Um, and they need to know where to go eat. They need to know um, where and to And maybe go. someone to pay for their food because they and might they not have. have they yeah. have done that. They have actually have paid for their food for the night. So And, and uh, if people only speak Spanish, that's okay? Most definitely. I've actually have, I had a young family that came to me who they only spoke Spanish. They were sent up here by truckers. To, from Florida all the way up to New York. Well, it was very nice of those travels. Yes, and yes. they were a Spanish-speaking family, and, and although the person who housed them that night did not know much English, but they got by. <laughs> That's great. That worked out, yes. That's really great. Yeah. And another service that I forgot to talk about that we do also is primary care and Wonderful. choices. So many women today and trans women actually don't really have a doctor they go see. When they're sick, they tend to not go. Their lives Excuse are very me. busy. Uh, I go to Cal and Lord mm -hmm. because it's a, an LGBT thing. And I've seen s cisgender straight women with children there having to say that they're gay so they can get primary care. I believe that. Yeah, yeah. I believe that. And to get an appointment right away is not that easy to do. No. So that's another service that we opened up to the community as well. And it, it obviously encompasses it all because if a woman comes in for GYN care, they should equally come in to see sure, a primary doctor. absolutely. And for many years, women were using their gyno doctors as their primary care yes. for many, many years. So this is actually something that stemmed from one service that led to another. And people can need. get prescription for, say, the pill and all that? Most at definitely. Your place? Yes. Yeah, Choices has always been known for offering up-to-date and much needed reproductive health, and one of them is actually birth control. Yes, so from which... The from the implant all the way to IUDs to the new diaphragm, Kaya, there's all these new things that are and out there. And if you need an abortion, they will help you to get Most one. definitely. From medical abortion up to 10 weeks and a surgical up to 24 weeks, which is New York State law. Mm -hmm. And they could go up to. Which I think is outrageous that if it's your body, you should be able to have an abortion right. one minute before giving birth. Correct. How dare men put their rules on women's bodies? It's part of women's reproductive rights exactly. to have an abortion and to to take care of the needs of their health care. It's part That's of right. their health care. Correct. And no it's one like should take that away. It's like having to get governor permission before getting a haircut or Right, something. right. Mm -hmm. This is your right. You should be able to decide what you wish to do with your body. That's right. And that's why <coughs> Mel Hoffman got started with this whole <coughs> process. Uh, how can someone Excuse dictate me. what you can or cannot do? Because it's your choice, and that's where the name Choices came from. As and well. and certainly never more need. It's almost as much. Mm -hmm. It's needed as much now as it was circa 1971 when Merle started this. Yes, yes. Um, we were talking about this earlier today. Is that how is it that um, today's political um, yeah, genre? Is it, it's, it's almost like we're living back in the 70s again. Or worse. Right. And at that time, it was difficult, you know, and to make sure that women were getting services. And it's not changing at all today. You know, wealthy women always, when they needed an abortion. <laughs> They went into the hospital for exploratory surgery. Boom, there's their abortion. Mm, <laughs> yes. Poor women drank cleaning fluid, right. jumped up and down, punched themselves in the stomach, threw themselves right. downstairs, right. and still kept the baby because the baby wouldn't dislodge, but now they have a broken back, and, you right. know, and now the baby has problems because of all the stuff they've ingested to Correct. get rid of it. You know, I mean... There were horrific stories that went on for years and years and And if you're in other countries, that stuff still goes on to that's today. That's terrible. So that's why choices came to well, be. Well, El Salvador, it makes that's it... Right. You go to jail if you have Correct. an abortion. Correct. Correct. And we've had some women who've come, actually, from different countries. We've yeah. had that happen before, where they can't have their abortion there. I've had women who've crossed the border, who've walked into choices, pregnant because someone along the route has raped them. Yeah, and their coyotes uh, have actually taken advantage of them on their route here. Yeah. And they make their way to choices. They find their way, and yes. and obviously we, we have staff that speak Spanish, and mm -hmm. we have other staff that speak many languages. Because Jamaica, Queens, by the way, absolutely is a very diverse area. You, every <laughs> Asian dialect, <laughs> correct? Even, yes, absolutely. right. So, um, and our staff do tend to represent that neighborhood as well, and all the different sure. ethnic cultures that do exist. And we also work with women who do come to the doors where their husbands are still making their decisions for them. 
Uh, it's, it's unfortunate, but um, there are certain cultures that yes. that they must walk in with their husband. They feel that has oh. to happen, and so we do act to ask the actual woman to separate themselves from their partners for a couple of minutes to make sure this is what they wish to do, you know, and allowing them to know what their rights are in this country. Which right? many women are willfully kept from knowing by their partners and their societies and their religions. Right, right. Which is very sad. And told that you'll, you know, God will kill you right. if you do what those nasty Western women do. Correct, correct. Yes. And when we met Tanya back in January, one of the big, um, I would say that the big points of view that came across to us loud and clear from the transgender community was you need to employ transgender. Yes. Right? It was a big I issue. a receptionist. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just kidding. Yes. Right? So that's how this started. Um, we heard it loud and clear. We were at a focus group in Jackson Heights, Queens, and they explained to us how the levels of poverty are high yes. in the transgender community and the lack of resources, or not just that, they will not be hired in yes. jobs today. So we Or worse, they will be hired, and then when it's discovered, they will be fired. Right. So we decided this is the route to go. We need not just that the transgender community needs to orient us and how to help them, but we need to also hire. And that's so how if you're transgender and you're looking for a job and you have qualifications, <laughs> contact choices. And now we have to tell them how to contact choices. Yes. So you can uh, reach us to www.choicesmedical.com. And Tanya could talk to you about the social media piece because that's live right now. <laughs> yes, um, you could reach us at Choices Trans Care on Instagram and um, Choices Medical Trans Care on Facebook. Yes. 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 And and again, could you give your thing again, Esther? My <laughs> you know what I mean. Okay, the, the so address. I am yeah, so we're located at one forty seven dash thirty two Jamaica Avenue. Um, of course Jamaica, New York, one one four three five. Um, to reach us, if you don't have, obviously, um, the means of social media, you can reach us at 718-786-5000 to make an appointment. There is someone on call 718-786-5000. Easy to remember. Yes. And you could call any time. There is actually a call center that's operating at all times with different languages as well. We, you could reach, you can make an appointment by online. You can make an appointment actually texting. There's actually no need to say you can't find a way how to make an appointment. And they and will give you instant Medicare, Medicaid, Medicaid, Medicaid. If you do not have medical insurance, do not worry. You found a haven and friends. My <laughs> guests have been the wonderful trans woman Tanya Walker, yes. who's now heading a trans group at Choices Medical Center, Medical Center in Jamaica, Queens, and Esther Preeg. Who is, what are you? The Director of Counseling at Choices Women's Medical Center. Yes. And I'm Diana Montfort. This has been the Diana Montfort Show. Hey, even if no one else loves you, I love you. And if you <laughs> need help, wherever you're watching this, go to Choices. They're really nice and they're for real. This isn't like some BS so they can get some money from the government and then no. you drop dead. They mean it. They really mean it. So go to Choices. Wherever you are, contact Choices and maybe they can help you get to New York and get what you need. And remember, it's what you need. This is not a luxury. This mm -hmm. is your health. And you, in every other country, people are given health care. Here, we have to die for it. Anyway, right. I love you even if no one else loves you. See you next time. Bye. Okay. Right, and an the expert. microphone's still on. So, and this will go on YouTube, even though we've said cut. So we can take a little break now. And then okay. we Great, 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 great. We should talk about walk-ins. We forgot about walk-ins. Yeah. You know, we take walk-ins. That's great. You can walk up the street. And That's great. And I'll talk, and I'll talk yeah, about That's not who everywhere. Yes. Because I'm the transgender outreach coordinator. Yes. I know, and, and I concentrated on S. But that's sorry. okay. Yeah, I'm she sorry. needed to. No, that's okay. Ooh, she needed to get do? that out there. Oh, no. That's, that's, that's very important. Okay. okay. Well, Whose is what? This is mine, I think. Okay. It's very important that S. Yes. Yes. So. Yeah, just drape it over this thing. No, 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 you're right, Tanya. You need to talk more. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, talk, I'll talk more next time. Yeah. Well, that's Tanya's problem. She's so shy. I see. I'm just letting Esther tell it all because. Tanya, you know, I want you to talk a bit more about how. What, how the trans community has been receiving us. Right. I want you to Anybody want to go downstairs? Yes. Yeah, I can need some air. Okay, for sure. Yeah, but take all your stuff because. I am. Yeah. yeah. Because. <laughs> oh, no, they'll just move it. They won't know that. You if know, I leave that here, I can't. What is it? This is my some book. Yeah. yeah, but take your purse. Yeah, I'm going to take well, my purse. Okay.
Why are little babies outside right now? Oh, isn't that great? And we say, hey, maybe we can come in and sit here and watch. He He's a 22 month old. He oh, he'll be, be screaming be and shouting. Running shining. around, running, touching every mic that you see right there. Wait a minute. Okay, I got it. 